What if you awoke this morning and the only things you had left were the things you thanked God for yesterday? What if you awoke this morning and the only things you had left were the things you thanked God for yesterday? How would you fare? You know, I am convinced that God is more concerned with us being grateful than just about anything else. Do you understand that if you were to wake up every day and go down the list of things and just tell God what you're grateful for. Don't wake up a single day without going down the list of things you're grateful for. It could be something minute. What God does in return is he gives you more things to be grateful for because he's a very wise and generous God, right? If you're not grateful for the things I've given you and you have no gratitude for it, and that seems to be really mundane to you, it's burdensome, why would I overload you with some more stuff that you ain't grateful for? If you just woke up every day and just thanked him for just all the things you can go down, the next day, the very next day, I promise you that he'll give you more to be grateful for. You'll be stunned how that, just change that one little thing. Show gratitude and then watch him give you a whole lot more stuff to be grateful for. It's not a day that I'm not able to add something else to the list. What would happen if before you left the house in the morning, you just took a moment and bowed down and said, God, I just want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for helping me. I believe I can do whatever I need to do today through Christ who strengthens me. I'd like everything to be good and work out the way I'd like it to, but God, if it don't, I know you're with me and it will work out good eventually. What would happen if at noon, in addition to having a little sandwich, you'd go somewhere and bow down for a minute and say, God, I just want to thank you for getting me through the first half of this day. And I'm so grateful, God, that you're working in me and you're going to... And then again in the evening or at night. During the day, make a habit of just stopping during your busy day and say, I am thankful for. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful that I have breath in my lungs. I'm thankful that I have a great marriage. I'm thankful that I have a job. I'm thankful for, you, you, you have to decide what you're grateful for. But all during the day, just be intentional about stopping during the day several times and say, I, I'm, I'm grateful for this. When you arrive home, anytime I arrive home after a trip in my car, I always say, thank you, Father, for a safe trip. You know what, it's a small thing, but I'm thankful that I didn't have a car crash. Gratitude is the door to God's presence. Gratitude and thanksgiving is the door to God's presence. And we read this so clearly in Psalms 100 and verse 4. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Enter with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is how we enter into God's gates is how we enter into God's house. So every time you pray, start with thanksgiving. Every single prayer you pray, start with thanksgiving. Every single day, start with thanksgiving because that's how we enter into the presence of God. Gratitude is a daily choice. Now, watch this. Enter His gates with what? Thanksgiving. How do you get to where He is? How do you get there? You ain't got to go through the gate to get somewhere. How do you get to the love and the joy and the peace and the hope and the encouragement and the blessing and the healing and the deliverance of God? How do you get there? Thanksgiving is the door you go through. Psalm 118 says, it's open to me the doors of righteousness. I'll go through them. I will praise the Lord. I'm telling you, gratitude and worship, a grateful heart is the way to where God is. Gratitude is a constant mindset of thankfulness. It's more than just saying thank you every once in a while to God or to people. It's an attitude of gratitude that you make as your lifestyle. God wants us to respond to everything that happens in our lives with an attitude of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, always be thankful in all circumstances 
for this is God's will for you. Now, always be thankful in all circumstances. That about covers everything, right? There's no loophole there. Always be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. Now, if you obey that, God says, I'm going to bless you in every area of your life. And notice that he says, this is God's will for you. God's will for your life. You say, I want to know God's will for my life. God's will is that you are always grateful. You're always thankful. You're always full of the attitude of gratitude. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be. Be thankful and give thanks. Be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God. You know, so many people want to know what God's will is. And something he put on my heart probably 30 years ago is before people work too hard at trying to find out what my specific will is for them, like, you know, what their ministry call is or who they're supposed to marry or what their spiritual gift is or those kind of things we'd all concerned about. We just need to, to work with the Holy Spirit at fulfilling the general will of God. The first thing we could start with is learning how to be thankful. Amen? And you can develop an attitude of gratitude. And I certainly don't mean that I don't have a long way to go because I do, but I've sure come a long way too. And I used to be so negative and so grouchy. And I mean, I could find something wrong with everything. I grew up in a very negative atmosphere and it just kind of got off on me. But I tell you now, I don't even know how many times a day I say, thank you, God. You know, we need to develop that attitude of what do we have if God doesn't help us? What are we except for the grace of God? What are we except for God's goodness in our lives? We're nothing, absolutely nothing. We deserve nothing. And every good thing that happens to us is a gift from God. And we need to celebrate God's goodness. Thank God in everything. Recall, recount, remember the good things that God has done in your life. Remember the Red Seas that he's parted. Remember the manna. Remember the water that's come out of the rock. Remember the stones that he rolled out of the way and the resurrections that you've had. Let's take time to remember those things and let's talk about those things. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances might be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 19. I love this. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. So what is that telling me? When I complain, I stop or quench or hinder or halt the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. But if I'm going to be praying and asking God to help me with my situation, and then I'm going to be complaining about the very thing that I say I'm trusting God to deliver me from, then I pray and I open the door for him to work. I complain and I shut the door in his face. But if you can just keep saying, I believe that this is going to work out for my good. God, I don't know how you're going to pull this off, but this is going to work out for my good. Some way, somehow, you are going to take this tragic situation and you are going to work it out for my good. So God, as hard as it is for me to say it, I'm going to thank you right in the midst of it because even though I don't see it or feel it, I know that you're working something good out of this. Can we believe that today? All things, all things, all things work together for good. If you want to find the will of God for your life, buy your Bible, turn it to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here it is, verse 18. This is so simple. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now you know the will of God for your life. Being a thankful person is bigger than any vocation there is. I'm alive because he wanted me to be alive. I had something to eat today because he provided it. People love me because he, he caused that to happen. I saw the sunrise because he made that happen. What, what, are you gonna, what do you do? What's the only thing you can give him that he didn't already have? A grateful heart. A grateful heart. He don't need your money. He don't need, he don't need you to work for him. A grateful heart is the treasure of God. A grateful heart is the foundation of life. Nothing will change your life more. Nothing. Every moment in your life and the moment you wake up. Till the moment you lay your head on a pillow at night and all during the night, 
you have much to be thankful for. Thessalonians says this, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. But what if the situation is bad? How can I be thankful for that? You know, it doesn't say for everything give thanks. He says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? That I keep a thankful heart. Don't let frustration rule in your hearts. Let gratitude rule in your hearts. And then the scripture promises you'll receive the peace of Christ. The, the good life is out there waiting for you. And you're actually probably already living it if you were just to take the time and acknowledge all the good you already have. Don't let the if onlys get you down. Here's to living the good life with thankfulness in our hearts. Oh, dear friend, be grateful today. I think it's a principle that if we don't learn to live with a grateful heart, and especially being grateful when things are not going our way, and to give thanks, not only to God, but to people. I'm telling you, I think you can change the atmosphere where you work, you can change the atmosphere in your home, you can change the atmosphere in a church, perhaps in a city, perhaps even in a nation. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Why should God give me, if I'm a complainer, why should God answer my prayer and just give me more to complain about? The heart has to change. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. What's going on in your life that you have been murmuring about and you haven't once taken the time in that situation to say, well, God, this is happening and this is not fun and this hurts but here's 10 things I'm thankful for. Here's my test. Uh, if you're feeling anxious, think of 10 things for which you're grateful and just watch anxiety leave because anxiety and gratitude do not indwell the same heart. Gratitude gets anxiety out. It, it just chases it out. Anxiety sees gratitude coming, says I gotta pack my bags and leave. So the surest way to be uh, peaceful is to be grateful. I hope that you hear and that you will challenge yourself today to live with more gratitude than we do with complaints, regrets. That gratitude shifts your perspective. But when you are grateful, when you are deeply appreciative of God's kindness, when you are thankful, it shifts your perspective from the woe is me to the wildness of God. I love one of the definitions that I found of gratitude in the dictionary. It, it says, acknowledgement of having received something good from another and showing appreciation for it. Think about that. Acknowledge that we've received something good and then be thankful for it. Now look at that, this scripture in James 1:17. Every good and perfect gift is from our Father in heaven, coming down from our Father in heaven. Think about that, friends. Every good thing we have in our life is a gift from God. And we should acknowledge these good gifts and we should thank Him for what He's done for us. Listen, we should never take God's goodness for granted. As a parent, how does it feel when your child is ungrateful? It kind of grieves your heart, doesn't it? Well, what about when your child is grateful? It pleases your heart. And you know what? It makes you want to do more and more for your child. Well, I think it's the same way it is with God. When we're grateful, I think it pleases His heart. But you know what? We're, when we're ungrateful, I think that it grieves his heart. So I would just encourage you. You know what? Every good gift is from your Father in heaven. Learn to recognize those gifts and be thankful for that. Because the principle from that scripture is this. Every day we need to recognize God's goodness in our lives and express gratitude for all he's done for us and never take God's gifts and blessings for granted by being ungrateful. There is always something that we can be grateful for.